But the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland have said they won't be supporting the agreement in Parliament. Uh, in a statement that they issued this afternoon, they said these proposals are not, in our view, beneficial to the economic well-being of Northern Ireland and they undermine the integrity of the Union. Our main route of trade on an east-west basis, they said, will be subject to rules of the European Union Customs Union, notwithstanding that Northern Ireland will remain part of the UK Customs Territory. And they went on to say that throughout all the discussions on these issues, they have been clear that Northern Ireland should not be subjected to administrative burdens, which will be entrenched for the future. So that is the statement of the DUP. Quite a gamble then for Boris Johnson who needs on Saturday those 10 votes from the Democratic Unionist Party. Let's go to Westminster and speak to our chief political correspondent Vicky Young. I imagine people are starting to comb through these new 64 pages that we've got. Uh, some people saying they don't think this deal is as good as Theresa May's deal, Vicky. Yeah, I mean, lots of MPs you speak to are saying, look, I need to read it first before I decide if I'm going to back it. But there certainly, I think, is movement. And that movement is definitely from people who didn't vote for Theresa May's deal moving to either saying they will or they are definitely thinking about supporting her deal. Now, I'm not saying everybody, of course, but that is definitely, if the movement is anywhere, that is the way that it is going. So that's on the uh, Conservative side, including those former Conservatives uh, who um, were booted out of the Parliamentary Party several of them saying that their big issue is trying to prevent no deal. The best way to do that is to vote for a deal. So where does this leave the Labour Party? Let's speak to Owen Smith, who is with me now. Um, Jeremy Corbyn seems to be saying we'll want a confirmatory referendum. So presumably an amendment would go down on Saturday in order to try and get that. And that is something you want. Yes, it's something I've argued for for many years, you know. I think it's the right thing for us to be doing democratically to put this back to the people. Now we know what the shape of the deal is. And now that we know that it's going to be bad for our economy, we know there's going to be no guarantees in respect of maintaining standards, environmental standards, workers' rights standards, standards in terms of regulation, all of the things that we've fought for as a Labour movement for so many years to achieve and which will be placed in jeopardy under this deal under a Tory government. And you make that point because some of the stuff about level playing field and workers' rights and the rest of it has been put into the political declaration, which isn't binding. Uh, and yet there are some of your colleagues, more of them, I think, on the Labour side who feel that they might be able to back this deal. Well, if they do feel that, my word of warning to them is, is to read this carefully because, as you say, all of the stuff that was binding under Theresa, May, Theresa May's deal in terms of workers' rights and environmental standards isn't binding under these terms. These are now cast into the wish list bucket in the political declaration and, frankly, they're also contradicted by some of the other things that are said in the political declaration, i.e. that they want a free trade agreement and that Britain should be free to to do whatever we want in terms of our own standards, to pursue our economic objectives. And our concern has always been, of course, that when our economy is damaged, as it will be by Brexit, the temptation for the right-wing Tories who've been running the show in the Tory party for so long will be to do what they've always wanted to do and to cut workers' rights and wages and regulations and all of those things. So we would be, I think, facilitating further years of austerity and further years of Tory uh, cuts in our uh, standards and that shouldn't be something Labour ever wants to support. And what about the numbers for uh, another referendum? I mean lots of people in the so-called People's Vote campaign say that the, the mood has shifted and that actually there are Conservatives now who would back a second referendum that you do think you've got the numbers to get that amendment through here on Saturday? Well, it's definitely true that it's shifted. I've spoken to you know, lots and lots of Conservative and Labour MPs who've, as one of our Shadow Cabinet members put it the other day, have been on a journey in recent years and have got to the point now where they see the right thing to do to put it back to the people. Jeremy Corbyn thinks that's the right thing to do now. I've long said that's the right thing to do, and I hope that on Saturday when we come back here, we will be voting to do just that. It's all very well for this place to pass the deal, but we should only be doing so subject to it going back to the people to say, is this what they really wanted? Because it doesn't look like what was promised in 2016, and frankly, it isn't what was promised in 2016. It's a much worse deal for our economy than we've currently got, and it frankly jeopardises peace and security in Northern Ireland as well, something that no government, Labour or Tory, should ever even countenance.
But those who say another referendum must be held in order to, to finish this, to get it sorted, I mean, it doesn't necessarily, does it? Because why should Brexiteers respect another referendum if it were, for example, to go the other way and people vote to remain? Well, I understand that argument, uh, but my simple counter is this isn't resolved now. Uh, all of the polling shows that people have shifted. It's not a huge shift, but it's five or six or seven percent the other way. The polls suggest that Remain would now win. Is it right for this Tory government to ram through this set of changes, this Brexit, this hard Brexit that Boris Johnson is now proposing? Because make no doubt about it, that is what he's after. A Canada-style free trade agreement is a hard Brexit that will unfortunately enable those Tories who want a more right-wing economic settlement in our country to pursue those objectives. They've had them for years. You know, this is the latest means by which they're going to try and prosecute those objectives. The right thing to do in those circumstances is put it back to the people, say to them, is this what you thought you were buying in 2016? And if it isn't, let's send it back. Thank you very much indeed. Owen Smith, the view there from uh, the Labour side wanting another uh, referendum. We'll have to see if that gets through on Saturday. I mean, everyone here, of course, talking about what might happen in that vote. Does Boris Johnson have the numbers? Uh, you know, I think those inside government are quite optimistic and they're, they're really how they're going to sell this uh, to the Tory party is to say, look, there's a clear path here towards voting for a deal and leaving by October the 31st. And the other path has so many branches all over it, you can't possibly know where that is going to end up. Just a quickie from me, uh, Vicky. I know that the government's advancing the motion today uh, for this vote on Saturday. Is that um, is this this motion that they put in front of Parliament? Is it amendable? Uh, I mean, when you talk to to, to to MPs about a referendum or indicative votes on this and that, can they do that on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think the feeling is that this is meaningful votes. I've lost count four, I think, um, and so the whole point of that was that it was always amendable. Uh, and then there's also lots of people discussing that beyond that, of course, if it were to be voted through on Saturday, you then, of course, need that withdrawal agreement bill which itself can be amended. So it is not an easy path, uh, whichever way uh, you look at it, but there is certainly a room there uh, for MPs to uh, tinker with things quite a bit. Good information, Vicky, for the moment. Thank you very much.